This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the program host and guest and are not necessarily those of WPSL. WPSL does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WPSL. Now it's time for Coffee at the Cabana, presented by the Cabana at Jensen Dunes. And now here's your host. Good morning. Welcome to Coffee at the Cabana with Joe and Jennifer. Uh, this is our new show, so anybody listening out there today is actually making history. Uh, mm-hmm. Welcome to the show, and we are taking phone calls at 772-340-1590. I am Joe DiCarlo, the Director of Marketing and Sales at the Cabana the Jensen Dunes, and I'm with Jennifer. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Jennifer. Jennifer is our Activities Director. What we're going to start with is a little trivia question, hopefully to open the lines up and uh, get you guys to call in a little bit. The first question that I have is who can answer what is an advanced directive? Now, one of the um, reasons to answer the questions or the um, you must be able to come to the cabana and pick up your prize. Oh, and it's a good prize, too. It is. And we also will invite you for lunch. Ooh. Free food. I so like um, we're hoping you can come by and uh, pick up your prize, see our f- beautiful facility. You're not going to tell them what the prize is? No. That's the surprise. Oh. It's a good prize, though. I have one. So. <laughs> well, it's lunch. a good prize. Uh, and command lunch. And lunch. And yeah. lunch. So, Can't go Who can turn that down? Food. No. So 340-1590, the number here at the station. We are starting off with a trivia question and prizes. Mm. And um, what we'd like to start out of with also is to a uh, little bit of senior talk. Um, um, I have probably about 30 years experience in the senior field that I can answer questions. Um, Jennifer is our, being our activities director can help you. Yeah, I got about 20 plus years having fun, so. So <laughs> we're a good team here. So if you have any questions, um, we are uh, right now in an assisted living. We do have people out there that um, might be looking for assisted living, might have questions for assisted living. If you have somebody, family member, yourself, your spouse, uh, friends, we have friends call. Um, feel free to give us a call. Now, Cabana at Jensen Dunes, to let us know where you're located. And uh, it, are you pretty new? Uh, we're a year and a half old. We're located at 1537 Cedar Street in Jensen Beach. As um, the guys in the morning like to say, head east on Jensen Beach Boulevard, south on Savannah Road, east on Cedar Street, get to the end and make a left, and we're right there on the hill. Okay. We're the shining star on the hill. Yeah, you can't miss it. We're huge. Can't miss <laughs> it at all. Uh, you can either come in for a tour, you can call, you can come in. Um, either way is okay with us, and we'll show you around. But you got to come check it out. you got to see it see it for yourself. You know, it's a beautiful place. It's can beautiful. people come take a tour? Can you look, look around? Do they have to make an appointment? How do you how do you get to no, do that? walk-ins no. are accepted. Okay. Um, you make it easy. Yes, for as easy as possible, and, and it's seven days a week. Somebody's okay. Somebody's there to give a tour. Super. Um, also, uh, Jennifer mentioned she wanted me to mention my office oh yeah joe's <laughs> got the best office ever you know you've s- i don't know if oh, you've Singer. never seen no Paul i haven't Singer. been <laughs> yeah good <laughs> off it's like uh, a big fishbowl yep it's all glass so i basically get to see whoever comes in and um so there's really no wait for anything now for um interested in assisted living what we do we also have a memory care unit um our assisted living routine is uh 24-hour nurses um 24-hour cnas we provide three meals a day Three full meals cooked by our chef, Kevin, of course. Um, We also provide activities, which is where Jennifer comes into play. And with our activities, we have events, parties, and we'll let Jennifer tell us. We have a lot going on at the Dunes. Uh, We like to start the day off every day with exercise. That always happens sharply at 10 o'clock, and uh, we always have a full house for that. And then their day starts right after that uh, if it's not bingo or playing cards or we're in the pool or we're out shopping uh, they're pretty much busy all throughout the day um, and if they're not out and about we come and find them and knock on their doors and get them out so it's a pretty active place to live they actually look forward to all they the do act- even they do. when you're in your office we and sometimes yes. do little shows behind <laughs> in your office and we've had chairs lined up and residents were sitting there watching us they can't hear us but they no. see us and <laughs> you know still <laughs> laughing and so. uh coming up we have a big saint patrick's day party yeah we do so you gotta wear your green wear your green come to our party we're gonna have music food and um good time 
which is what we like to have. Hmm. And you're having that on Friday, Friday the yeah. 16th, mm-hmm. the day mm-hmm. before. Yep. So it'll be a good time. We're always having parties. We're always yep. looking for, for something. If it's not a birthday, it's you know something going on. So we're always having fun. A lot of music goes on there, too. We've got um, myself and Michael, who do a lot of singing at the cabanas. So they've got entertainment pretty much every day. So there's always something going on. And uh, a lot of people want to know, how do we get to the cabanas? Uh, it's very simple. Come in, take a tour. If you like what you see, uh, usually the tour is done by me or I had to have an assistant. We have um, three different models. We have a studio. We have um, one bedroom and a smaller one bedroom. Actually, we have four. And we also have shared rooms, two shared, uh, four shared rooms. And that's set up more like a college dorm kind of thing. So uh, my suggestion is if you're, again, thinking of an assisted living. I think it would be more like a luxurious college dorm. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A college of yeah, like, yeah, like no other. That's Co- true, too. Yeah, college students everywhere are going, yeah. <laughs> I, <wanna laughs> right. I want that we'll dorm room. <laughs> Free food. We clean your room. We do your laundry. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where do I sign up for that? Yeah. <laughs> but, yep, come by. Uh, look around. Any, any place, that whenever you're thinking. Um, we take people right from the hospital. We take people from skilled nursing. We take people from home. And uh, we also take people from out of state. We so have you have permanent residents and you have, do you have really people rehabbing as well? Uh, not as much, but we do rehab there. We do outpatient therapy. We mm-hmm. have a out, uh, therapy department, but not as an inpatient, no. Okay. Um, and we also have a memory care unit too. Okay. Which is uh, very popular. Yeah, that's huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's just a great place, though, because when you walk in, I know when I walked in to, f- you know, the first day on the job, it's a great feeling when you walk through those front doors. You know, it's not stuffy. It's not, you know, you just get that homey. Everybody's nice. Everybody talks to you. Everybody takes the time. You know, you're walking in the hallway. Somebody's smiling. They're not, they don't just pass by you. Everybody greets you, and it's, it's just a really great family atmosphere. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the good part about the, the cabanas. One of the other questions based on that um, I get when we do a tour, a popular question is, does everybody get along? <laughs> well, we have 107 people, so the answer is sometimes. Right, but pretty much <laughs> most overall, of the time. Overall, you know, there's they do. <laughs> they kind do. of, sort of. <laughs> but the, the nice thing is, is when, they, when we get a new resident, being a new building, everybody's been new. So they all know how that new resident feels. Right. So they're able to welcome that new resident in. And, uh, and treat them like a new person. and, and be Which they do. They, they yeah. invite them over to their table when they're eating a meal or, and you do. know, an activity. They'll go grab them. And so they're pretty much all, everybody gets along. They do. You knock on wood somewhere. <laughs> 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 and, and another thing is when uh, I'm going by the questions I get about our dining room. Uh, our dining room is, is unique to where it's open at 7 in the morning and closes at 6 at night. There's no assigned seating. Uh, you can sit wherever you want. Uh, we also have the uh, sandbar that you can eat in, the bistro. That sounds to me like you can stroll in at your, right. g- yeah. at your leisure to come get that's right. a meal. Some that's people right. like to sleep late, and that's quite all right. You know, So the sandbar is a good option where they yeah. can still get whatever they want. You mm-hmm. know, The menu is still pretty – they get a, a really great menu, a lot of choices. Three full meals cooked by chefs. Right. So it, it is good. So these are the things that when you are looking for assisted living, you can look for. Um, and if anybody has any questions during our show, you can feel free to call us. And don't forget the trivia question. Uh, Which what was what again? What is an advanced directive? Mm. At 340-1590. And prizes, too. And prizes. prizes. I'm so and excited. excited. We're going to feed you. Yeah. <laughs> 340-1590. Give us a call here if you know what an advanced directive is. Explain it to us. Yep. And I'll be able to help you, too, if you don't get it right. <laughs> <laughs> so is there different levels of care as well? I mean, you have met multiple units, different styles of units that you can, uh, you know, the residences. Is there different levels of care? Yes. Good question, mm-hmm. too. Um, we have what we call a basic level of care. One of the things um, we do is uh, pass out medicines to the people, and we don't charge for that. Uh, and that falls under our basic level of care. We call it med management. Med management. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we have three levels of care. Uh, the, the more assistance you need, the higher the level of care. Um, some people come in there where they just only need help getting dressed and bathing in the morning. So that's a level one. Um, some people come in where they need visits by the staff. And then depending on the, the amount of visits, 
and type of visits, that would be a level two or a level three. So, yep, there's mm -hmm. there's um, different levels. And in our memory care, it's all inclusive. There's no levels of care up there. It's, it's a little higher level of care, and um, that's the way we, we run it up there. Okay. But in assisted living, there's three levels of care. And does a doctor have to give you the, um, like, a referral to come? You know, does it, is it... Or it, your no, your come family can come and you can come and yep. take a look. Okay, there, there is um there is a form that the state asks us to uh, have filled out. It's called the eighteen twenty three, and a doctor fills that out mm -hmm. before they come in, and we do have to have that on file for them. Okay, and that's just basically all their medical history, right. um, the medicines that they're taking. Mm -hmm. And uh, it tells us exactly what kind of care they need. Sure, and because you're taking on that responsibility of making sure that they're getting their medicines, right. You, you're right. You have to have the doctor kind of in the loop yeah. there. And then we also have doctors on staff with us, too. Mm -hmm. So um, some people follow with our doctors, and some people follow their doctors in the community, and we're able to transport them. That was going to be my yeah, next we question. Have, <laughs> we have transportation, and on, on certain days during the week, we either go to Stewart or um, Jensen Beach, and then we go to Port St. Lucie. Uh, so they're able to get to their appointments. Um, if we can get them there, we get them there. Mm -hmm. Also, family helps in, too, with that. Um, so we've got a beautiful bus and we have a beautiful car. So depending on what, you know, the day brings, we get them to where they got to go. Mm -hmm. And, um, since in their rooms, there's no stove or, um, any cooking things. They okay. don't need food to cook in their rooms, but some of them like to have snacks and drinks and things like that. And on Wednesdays, the, uh, transportation goes to the stores. Yeah, we run errands on Wednesday and outings on Wednesdays, and then Memory Care does their outings on Fridays. So we try to, you know, get everybody out, and if they need little things here and there, we try our best to mm -hmm. make sure they're accommodated. I'm thinking Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have that, yeah. <laughs> have it delivered right to the door. <laughs> I, I've tried, we've tried to explain that to them, but they'd rather go to Walmart. Yeah, they might not get it yet, yeah, right? right. <laughs> not yet. Boy, yeah, it sure is convenient. <laughs> <laughs> that it is. Yeah. The whole idea is to, is to be self-contained to mm -hmm. where they don't have to go. Right. If they don't want to. Right. Yeah. Right. And if you walk around the community and, and talk to some of the residents, they're happy, you know, and, and they're happy that they don't have to drive anymore or do their laundry or cook their meals. And, you know, they come back yeah. from lunch and their room is clean and they come back in and they're like, oh, this is great. Right. You know, everything's already done for them. Laundry's folded and put it on their bed and all uh, they have to do is wow. put it away. Yeah. We just started uh, an aquatic class. So now on Mondays, uh, the first and the last Monday, Monday of every month, we have exercise in the pool with a licensed uh, instructor that comes in and we had a pretty big class last Monday so I'm hoping I'm hoping uh, in a couple weeks it'll be an even bigger class so and we're still growing you're still getting people in so you know I think that uh, we're going to be full pretty soon hopefully yes hopefully <laughs> <laughs> you'll get there <laughs> um, one of the things that Jennifer does in it and um, I don't know if it's unique to us but I like to think that everybody does it if if we're not doing an activity, when somebody moves in, um, we had a woman who was a gardener at home, and um, she moved in with us, and she was upset. And I said, what's wrong? She said, I miss my garden. So I got with Jennifer, and Jennifer took her to Home Depot. Went to Home Depot and said, get whatever you think you're going to need to start your garden. Mm -hmm. And she was just in heaven yeah. for one, because she's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. So we got two carts, and we got a flatbed, and... She, because I'm not, I don't have a green thumb, and she loaded up everything that we needed. And now, if you come to the cabanas and you come out to our courtyard, she has transformed one of the corners of this courtyard to her orchid garden. And I yeah, mean, she beautiful. goes out there every day, beautiful. and she spends hours out there, just you know, making sure everything's the way it should be. You know? Bocce ball. We had a gentleman move in that was the bocce ball champion oh. wherever he lived. I don't even know what bocce ball. <laughs> well, I didn't either until he came <laughs> aboard and then I had to read it and, you know, now we go out there and we play and <laughs> I wasn't trying to beat him. I, I was trying to play the right way. I was really, you know, concentrating and I ended up beating him and I felt bad because <laughs> he said, you let me win. I, I let you win. And I said, listen, I, I was trying to just play. I wasn't trying to win or anything, but but he loves bocce ball. So we were afraid he was going to move out because Jennifer no. beat him, but yeah. he didn't. No. <laughs> hey, good competition, though. Yeah. yeah. yeah so <laughs> it's, it's just there's always something going on there. So, you know, we even have a putting green that some of the folks go out. And so. And um, one of the other things is the movie theater. 
We yep, had a nice a, movie theater. A lady move in, and she wanted to be in charge of movie night. Yep. So she, you know, gets Netflix and she sends the movies in, and then she puts it up on the TV, turns it on, and you know, a few times a week they all meet and they watch a movie, and it's beautiful room, big big chairs that they can sit. Oh, that's because they're helping you take care of activities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's great because yeah. you know. Th- th- at night, they want something to do at night, and a couple of the ladies have stepped up and said, oh, I can do that, and, you know, they have Scrabble that's going on mm-hmm. and different things, and so. It's just, we, we try to make it fun, we try to make it comfortable, and we try to make them feel at home as much as possible. Right, because that is their home. And, and that's you know? what, y- you have to look for those things, that this is going to be their home, um, we have to meet their needs. Um, we always tell, I always tell, and Jennifer does too, um, it's it's their home. It's not our home. We just work there. Well, right. I can attest to how hard it is being a, a working daughter with an 80-year-old father who, yeah. you know, now as the daughter, I'm taking care of the laundry at my home and his home. Yeah. I'm taking care of the cleaning at my home and his home because he's having a hard time. Yeah. I mean, this seems a lot easier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it really does. It is. Yeah. Right. And that's it. You, all you have to do is come in and visit them and mm-hmm. enjoy being with them. And, you know, and they mm-hmm. still have their independence because they right. have a key to their room. They shut it. They go back. That's their own space. You know, they can come out if they want to. And, you know, they still can live their life. You know, it's mm-hmm. just a little different. But we kind of help fill in those voids. And so far, so good. It's well, that, working. That's one of the reasons why my dad didn't want to move in with me. Because then he feels like a guest instead right. of feeling like that's his home. And if he wants to walk around in his underwear right he can right. <laughs> so Very i guess true. they can too can't yes, they yes. Yeah. and Very the true. rooms are great you know you they're the nice rooms, rooms are so nice it's like a it's like a, a resort yeah you know they're, they're cozy they make them to um where they're cozy the one bedrooms uh has a living room and a bedroom one's bigger than the other mm-hmm. um we we give them cable tv we provide it in both the bedroom and the living room. Mm-hmm. Uh, we provide their own thermostats, which is very important because sure. they like the mm-hmm. temperature very high. Yes. Yeah. Um, Grandma, how come it's so hot yeah. in here? Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, they yeah. have their own bathroom. They do get their own refrigerator and they have a microwave. Yeah. And some of them have decorated their apartments so nice. Yeah. Like you can walk down one part of the hallway and you can smell this this aroma of fresh flowers <laughs> and when you walk into this resident's room she has made it so pretty and it's just uh, some of them really have taken the times with their family to make their rooms real homey mm-hmm. you know they're, they're beautiful and, and that's important yeah, <coughs> that's the that's first thing i tell them when they come in for a tour you have to feel comfortable here you the resident has to feel comfortable the, right. that you're going to live here um and that's anywhere they go anywhere you go on a tour you, when you walk in that building, you can tell right away whether you're going to be comfortable or not. Mm-hmm. And you know what I like when you, when you do your tours? Because my office is right by the back door, by the beautiful pool that we have. But I can hear you when you're touring people and you're, you always say, well, th- and this is our backyard. Yes. Which they like because, you know, you're so personable with them. And then they come out and they see, you know, the beautiful backyard. Yep. Our backyard so. has our pool, dunes. We have our dunes back there, our sand dunes. And then we have a big porch. So there are literally dunes. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah. Yeah. they're sand dunes. The cabana there edges. Yeah. Dunes. <laughs> I, went, I always wanted to see what was over the top, so I yeah. walked to the top. And yeah, you know how you see some of these subdivisions, like, uh, you know, they, they panther trail or whatever. Right. There's not a panther. There's no panther. No. There. No. <laughs> no, yeah, no, we have the dunes. We have, dunes. we have the dunes, and we have to keep them the dunes, too. Mm-hmm. That was the uh, part of the deal okay. with the county and the city. So there's a preserve there, around 37 acres. And it's beautiful back there. It's really nice. And and what's nice, too, is um, we've started a butterfly garden. One of my staff uh, took it upon herself and raised them. You know, I I never knew how much work that this butterfly garden was until she was done. But she really put her heart and soul into this, and she engaged some of the residents. So they had never seen the whole process, you know, from the butterfly from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. But since uh, this butterfly garden has come about, We've had at least five butterfly release parties where the residents... And no swatting. Out. No, no swatting. <laughs> <laughs> where all the residents come out, though, and then uh, we've taken the butterflies out of where they were born, and when they're ready, we release them, and we've had a photographer come out for yeah. that. And beautiful, beautiful mm-hmm. experience that they got to see that whole... They enjoyed that. They really they did. did. That was a great thing. And this was a resident who, who um, put... One of my staff, oh, okay. uh, she said, would okay. it be all right if we had a butterfly garden? I said, yeah, if you yeah, want How do you even begin? I wouldn't know. So <laughs> sh- I said to her, if you want to take it and run with it, go ahead. And mm-hmm. she did. She 
at home, she raised the little. She got the eggs off. Yeah, of she got the eggs off, her off of somewhere, yeah. and she nurtured them, and she got these tiny little black spots to turn into little butter, little caterpillars, and then they grew and they grew, and then they turned into their. I, I don't know all the terminology yeah. for this. Butterflies. You know. They turned butterflies, into yeah. butterflies. Yeah, beautiful butterflies. <laughs> but the residents loved them. They came out every morning. They check on them, and mm -hmm. you know. So now and, and now it's got beautiful flowers, and butterflies keep coming back. Sure. So mm -hmm. it's really nice. It's nice. And then we um so once in a while we get the sandhill cranes. Oh, yeah. um, yes. One actually got in the building yeah. one time, so yeah. that was. Uh, yeah, they're bold. Yeah. yeah. Game right, especially in. if you feed them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were. Because we have the automatic doors, and he must have stood right there. Yeah. And made it for the door Big open. enough to make the doors yeah. open yeah. for him. Got in. <laughs> That's funny. That was a good one, but uh, it's nice. A lot of nature trails, um, sidewalks around the building. Um, we do have some people that walk them. Yeah. Uh, Regularly, they yes. come out every morning and they make their laps. And plus, we do exercise programs and we walk around too. So uh, they're very active. We like to keep them keep them busy. You know. So I just want to remind everyone: this is coffee at the Cabana, presented by the Cabana at Jensen Dunes. You have a trivia question out there. I do. Three four zero fifteen ninety. What are advanced directives? So and there are prices. Ooh. There are <laughs> and lunch. Oh, lunch. So three four zero fifteen ninety. We've got about two minutes. We are going to take a break for the Florida news at the bottom of the hour. So give us again the location. We're at fifteen thirty seven Northeast Cedar Street, Jensen Beach. Uh, head east on Jensen Beach Boulevard, n south on uh, Savannah Road, and then east again on Cedar Street. And we're at the end on the left. And it's a very beautiful assisted living. And a year and a half old. Um, Everything state of the art, brand new, clean. Very clean. Um, we have yep. a full uh, housekeeping staff. We have a maintenance staff. Um, we have, we've got some good staff. You yes. know, it, that's key. The, that makes it run so smoothly. I think is we got some good staff in that building. Management is great. Right, do. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a good team. We do. We have a good team. Um, participates into everything they do um, they do anything that we might ask that might sound silly but they still all right we'll do it yes <laughs> we're going to take a quick break for news we'll be back with more coffee at the cabana here on wpsl digital 1590 the talk of the treasure coast I'm Deborah Roberts. The Florida Senate plans to vote today on a school safety package to respond to the massacre at Stoneman Douglas High School. Senator Bill Galvano brought the bill to the floor in a rare Saturday session. And we have to take seriously, more seriously than ever before, the issue of security in our schools and safety in our schools. And this bill really is unprecedented. Democrats have their doubts, though. Senator Audrey Gibson's biggest concern is the school marshal program that allows some teachers to have guns in class. We don't need additional guns in schools. You don't add fuel to a fire that's already burning. It's burning just fine on its own. Democrats tried to eliminate the school marshal plan and pushed for a ban on assault weapons, but they didn't have the votes. Meanwhile, those who survived the Broward County school shooting are facing a long road to recovery and not just physically. A Central Florida Red Cross mental health volunteer recently returned from 12 days in Parkland, helping the students and their families. Dora Dorbin says the students who were in the building that day will need long-term mental health support. She tells Channel 9 they can't get the sights of the bodies, the blood, and the sounds of that day out of their heads. Today marks the original deadline that President Trump said the DACA program would end. While the program to protect illegal immigrants brought here as children is instead still being tied up in the legal system, people will be marching in Washington, D.C. today to advocate for a permanent solution. Florida Senator Marco Rubio believes a bipartisan agreement for DREAMers can be reached, but because of the focus on the Parkland shooting, the issue may have to wait. I think it has a chance to still come up this year, but I don't think you're going to see it come up in the next four to six weeks. That's just the truth. Demonstrators will be coming from all over the nation, including Florida, to Capitol Hill in support of the program. With news on the Florida News Network, I'm Deborah Roberts. 
Florida's boating environment is always changing. New sunsets, new experiences that you won't find anywhere else on Earth. But one thing that never changes, boating while impaired by drugs or alcohol. It's illegal in the state of Florida. Boating under the influence will land you in jail, or worse, kill someone you love. It's just simply not a risk worth taking. Learn more about Florida's boating laws at myfwc.com. Brought to you by the FWC Division of Law Enforcement. Hey, neighbor, trying a different weed and feed? Yeah, this year, I want more. Bayer Advanced 3-in-1 Weed and Feed for Southern Lawns. But why? We've used Scott's Bonus S for years. Yeah, Bonus S weeds and feeds, but it doesn't prevent new weeds. Bayer Advanced 3-in-1 Weed and Feed prevents new broadleaf and grassy weeds for up to six months. Wait, even crabgrass? Even crabgrass. Plus, it has a money-back guarantee. You sold me. Bayer Advanced 3-in-1 Weed and Feed for Southern Lawns. Get more from the blue bag. Always read and follow label instructions. A Florida social studies teacher is no longer teaching in the classroom after a report that she hosts a white nationalist podcast. So many other researchers have already looked into this, and that's just the way it is. There are, there are races that have higher IQs than, than others. The Citrus County School District said that an investigation into Crystal River Middle School teacher Diana Bolatich is ongoing. She's reportedly been running a podcast called Unapologetic under the name Tiana Dolachov, where she talks about spreading her views in the classroom. She's also pushed for more white nationalists infiltrating public schools. A 911 dispatcher is back from what she calls a truly awesome and fantastic experience. Tamika Greer was honored last month at the White House for being named Public Safety Professional of the Year. Greer got the award for helping police last summer find an elderly Largo woman who was lost in the woods. Greer tells Bay News 9 helping the woman gave her a happy feeling that reminded her of why she does her job. I'm Deborah Roberts, FNN News. And into the you're listening to Coffee at the Cabana on WPSL, presented by the Cabana at Jensen Dunes, senior living that's different from the rest. Now back to your host. All right. Good morning. Welcome back. Good um, morning, Joe. Nice to see you. It's so different to see you like Same this, here. you know, <laughs> not at the office. <clears throat> Welcome to Coffee at the Cabana. Um, I'm Joe DiCarlo, and I'm with Jennifer Lucier Fontaine, our activities director. That's me. Uh, what I'm going to talk about, we have a area in our building that's called the sandbar. Um, well, first of all, why don't you tell them about the prize that you have? Because okay. if you don't talk about the prize, then probably nobody nobody's going to call in because okay. they're wondering what's the prize. So we have a trivia question. Hmm. The trivia question is, what are advanced directives? And the prize is a cabana goodie bag full of a cabana robe. Ooh. A cabana mug. And it's a beautiful robe, by the way, because yes. I have one. And it says the cabana on it. It does. It's a nice <laughs> color. It's a teal color robe. It's very nice. And you said the bag of goodies. I forget what's in it. but The cabana mug. Ooh, that's a good mug, too. And the cabana... Um, Travis? Or Travis tra Tumbler. Uh, yes. However you say that word. Right. Travis. Travis. Travis Tumbler. But it's a nice bag of goodies. And maybe yeah. some pens and pads and things like that. Mm -hmm. And also, when you come to pick it up at the cabanas, we'll give you lunch Ooh. cooked by our chef. That's always good because they got the best desserts. I know it's not, you it's know, not dessert talk about desserts yet. all the time. But they sometimes do. you can have, some people like to have dessert first at our place. I've seen it. And There's we'll a lady that likes to have her cake first and then she eats her food. So Cake and eat it whatever too? Whatever you want to do. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, that's right. <laughs> So hopefully somebody will call in and answer your question because I can't wait to hear. Uh, Do you know what an advanced directive I, is, Jen? I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but I know that it was in a training that we just That's had right. last week. <laughs> so if I had like a few things that I could pick from, I would know. Okay. So hopefully somebody so will answer that for if you. If you know what it is, and if you don't and nobody calls, we'll tell you at the end of the show mm -hmm. what it is. Then who gets the prize? Uh, you do. I'll we'll <laughs> save it for next week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try, try to give it away again next week. We'll get you lunch. <laughs> so talk about the sandbar. I know okay, you were talking about the sandbar. Okay, we have this uh, sandbar in our building. Um, it's it's a bistro set up with a bar. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a waiter, Michael. Michael. Who's our singing waiter. Yes. Our cooking waiter. And he's also our... Preacher on Sunday mornings. He preaches on Sundays. Michael wears many hats at the cabanas. He does, and he actually wears hats when he sings. He does. He has so, props now. So yes. um, at this sandbar, and keep in mind, everything is free. There's no charge. And, you know, the dangerous thing about our sandbar is we have um, a mini oven where they're always baking fresh bread, cookies, scones, muffins. All day long. All day long. So it's very 
hard to walk by there and not stop. and not want to. And then cinnamon buns, they make these cinnamon buns. And that it's all the day. whole building smells like a bakery. It's just when you first walk in, smells are important. And um, when you walk into our building, you just gravitate to the sandbar because it smells it's right so good. There. It's right there. And I see you take cookies now and yeah, then. Sometimes. I know, I Don't see tell you. anybody. <laughs> no, but they're, it's they're hard yummy. Not to. But you know, we do a lot of entertaining at the sandbar. Um, if it's not Michael or myself singing, I've got entertainers that come in and uh, they love to perform at the cabanas because it's a beautiful place. And in that sandbar, echo it, the sound in there is just beautiful too. When when you have somebody singing in there, it just you know the whole building it just echoes it's just a a nice nice place to hang out we have a lot of family members that come by for happy hour the best part of the sandbar is happy hour yes we have a lot of fun at happy hour every day at 3 30 so visiting my loved one in happy hour too yes right so yeah and you yes. can get a signature drink at the uh sandbar you know sometimes there's smoothies um sometimes it might be just a glass of wine but um, we and we have a, a lot of people that show up for San, you know, for happy hour. A lot of family members come too, which is nice mm -hmm. to see. They'll come and sit with their uh, their family member that's a resident, and they enjoy it. It's nice. It goes from three thirty to four thirty. Mm -hmm. Jennifer and Michael um, sing generally, and then we have entertainment come during the same time frame. And sometimes our maintenance man sings. If he's yes. if, if people are walking <laughs> by, and I've got the microphone in my hand, <laughs> I might put somebody on the spot and. You know, our, our maintenance guy is great. Ho Jose will <laughs> rock out a Elvis Presley song on the spot. So we try to get everybody involved. Um, I have to say that's one thing at the Dunes that's good. Everybody knows that we're there for the people that we support. So they try their best to always make them feel welcome yes. and, you know, yes. never an outsider. It's just very, very family oriented. So it's a good feeling to all, see. All of our doors are always open. Um, I seem to get the brunt of that since I'm in the fishbowl, yeah. and that's okay. And, or they come down to my office, too. If I leave my door open, yeah. they're coming in. They're they, always coming yeah. in. They find somebody in the hallway, they will stop and ask, and, uh, yeah. and that's okay, because that's what we're there for. And we always get, I don't want to bother you, but it's never any bother. Right. Never. Right. Um, that's the w I always tell them that's the worst thing I could ever hear, that you don't want to bother me, because I don't mind. Mm -hmm. And right. none of us do. No. And Everybody's always do. open to to helping out it w whatever i mean i think i've seen you push a vacuum when mm -hmm. you had to you know we all we all just try to help out and we're there for them so whatever we can do to make their lives you know in and the first part of the show we you mentioned memory care do you want to elaborate on that <coughs> a little bit sure. or our memory care unit is um is a secured unit we um we use it um, not that we use it, that's a bad word, but it's for our um, Alzheimer's or dementia people. Mm -hmm. um, we are very conscious on our assisted living people that wander. Um, if they have Alzheimer's and dementia, um, we're going to recommend the memory care unit being secured because we do not want anybody to wander right. out we those doors to be safe. and um, get lost. You hear stories of the people that get lost right. in the woods mm -hmm. and all that. Uh, also, up there, it's designed on a smaller version of our assisted living has its own dining room has Jen has two activity girls up there at has all its times own courtyard has its own courtyard which is beautiful because it has all that shade we have these nice sails that are <coughs> in our courtyard and um, what do you call it shrubbery or how mm -hmm. do you call all those plants bushes. that we have bushes <laughs> <laughs> it's just a nice if you want to go sit out there I mean there's beautiful plants to look at um, it's it's a nice smaller setting for those that can't you know. Yeah, you can't comprehend the larger setting. Even the rooms are designed smaller than the assisted living rooms. Mm -hmm. they're, they're studios, but they still have their own refrigerator. They don't get a microwave up there. But their their meal times are still, you know, just as nice as downstairs. They still get choices. They still have, you know, the chef prepared meals. And they get served um, by a waitress or a waiter. Right. They get the ones that can choose to choose what they yeah. want. And family mm -hmm. members too. They they enjoy having you know meals up there as well. And so. they're allowed to take their um, family member out. If they're there visiting, they can take them downstairs. They can come to happy hour. They can come to any of the events that we do. Mm -hmm. They can go in the pool. Yeah, the um, pool is really starting to kick off now, too. So they can use anything. It's just a matter of um, the wandering and the right. level of care is higher mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. there. So And it's nice. It's right. very nice. Because you'd have to be, you'd have to be watching <coughs> right. a, a lot closer. Yeah. 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 And that's what they do. They're they're good up there. We have nurses up there, CNAs up there. They have their own housekeepers. There's a lot of love up there. We're good. Yeah. 
you know, activities really puts their heart and soul um, into the the activities that the residents are engaging in upstairs because, you know, it's a little bit more love is needed upstairs. It takes a special person mm-hmm. to be able mm-hmm. to work up I there. know not every facility even has no. a, a memory care unit. They don't. Um, most of them don't, but they're becoming popular again um, to where the newer ones are starting to build memory care mm-hmm. units with their buildings. And what's nice, too, uh, in upstairs um, in memory care is we have a couple of residents that play the piano, and we have a beautiful piano up there. So in the morning, sometimes when we're all just, you know, coming in, we'll be stepping in, and you hear music playing, and the, and the piano is going, and then you look over, and one of our residents is just sitting there, and she's, you know, now drawn a crowd where I went up there and there was five other ladies just listening to this one resident play the piano so it was really nice to to hear that Uh well we do have the phone call and that's Barbara from Jensen Beach hi hi Barbara how are you hi Barbara I'm doing good I think I might know what an advanced director is but I'm not sure okay Um, since since you are um, assisted living um, you need a little bit special types of activities for people who are in the assisted living and and rather than say advanced age director i think it's just advanced director that's no. what i'm thinking no, no? that's not it but you <laughs> okay. know what you can still come by and have a free lunch on us yeah because you oh. called barbara because you're the the caller of the day oh well thank you so much and you can All bring right. a friend if you'd like also Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll definitely uh, call the cabana and uh, set that up. Okay, that sounds good. you have any right. other questions for us, Barbara? Um, what, what if you don't need assisted living? Can you still um, apply to live there? Well, that would probably be independent living. Um, independent, Or okay. you, you might fall into uh, what we call the basic level of care, um, as I was saying in the beginning, to where mm-hmm. we... Um, don't charge for a level of care, but we still have the nurses there and the CNAs there to take care of you. You would also get a call bell button to help mm-hmm. you. And one of the okay. things we do that we don't charge for is med management. So we would be able to manage your medicines for you. Okay. All right. And, Good. And, and, yep. And you still be able to have your car also. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, thank you, Michael. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Take care. So she can come by and have lunch at the cabana. Yeah. Now, why? Because, she, well, she didn't get the yeah, answer. Now you're going to so. have to tell them really what it is. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully you remember <laughs> after all that. <laughs> um, advanced directives are something that everybody, even young people, should have in place. Uh, they are uh, living wills, power of attorneys, um, a do not resuscitate order. Um, what else? Even a regular will. Um, These are all things that um, they're directives that you put in place in advance, that's hence the word, um, prior to you getting sick. Um, This way you have the opportunity to let people know what your wishes are when you get sick. Um, A living will um, will tell them what kind of care that you want, Um, the power of attorney uh, that you choose yourself lets the medical people know who you want to manage your care. Um, so these I think are sometimes people get confused between a will and a living will. Right. They don't really know what a living will is. Right, two different things. Mm-hmm. Um, a will is for your finances, mm-hmm. and a living will is for your medical. Right. Um, there's also uh, two different kinds of power of attorneys, too. There's a financial one and a medical one, mm-hmm. but it can be the same person. You know, with you talking about all this stuff, too, um, sometimes we have in services well not in services but what's the word i'm looking for um chats that you invite for the um, community for the community to come in and you have different speakers that come in and they talk about you might have a lawyer's lawyer's office that comes in or um you know some home health agencies i'm actually going to try to get a lawyer to come on the show as a guest because that would probably explain it even better than i could mm -hmm. right um the best thing is an elder care attorney um there's plenty of them out there in the area um, those are the best people to go to to get these things lined up. But it, it's mainly for your own good um, so that you're making the decisions on your care. Uh, to When you get to a point when you can't make those decisions, uh, these papers come into play. Yeah, who makes those decisions for you? It's better to have that all lined up That's before right. you get there. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right, and they have to follow them. 
They have to. Mm-hmm. There's no no way around it. Now, who keeps those? I mean, I I can see that it would be in a file at at, at the at the uh, at the Jensen Dunes, Dunes, right? Yes, but if you let's say you ended up at the hospital and they do one at the hospital, you should that's have just for that event. That's not an in general. You no. know, if if something happens two weeks and you ended up at a different hospital, they're going to ask for it for too. An, again. Yeah. yeah. Any, anytime you uh, go into the hospital, unless they're capable. And I would imagine some of them are keeping that mm-hmm. on file for when you go back to visit them, that it's already there. But you would have these directives for all of your residents? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, we keep them. Uh, if if it's a resident, I would ask that a family member kept them. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe even the power of attorney person or the whoever's in charge on the living will. Right. Have them keep them. Um, or be told, like my parents per se have told me where theirs are. So, God forbid, something happens my to them. My dad, too. So, mm-hmm. we know where to go get them and bring them to the hospital. It's like this big production, though, where my father oh, yeah. has oh, kept his. It's, you know, <laughs> it's got step-by-step step of where to find it. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, that that's my recommendation. I don't get into how to do it or any of that, the legality of it, but I, I everybody should have one mm-hmm. um, if at any time. Uh, keep in mind the power of attorney. Uh, once you pass away, that becomes obsolete. Right. Because then it goes to the will. Mm-hmm. So, um, but that way, you know, uh, somebody, some stranger is not um, making all your decisions. Or I've you're at the right. hospital and no one's making decisions right. for you. Right. Right. You want to have the hospital then put in place. They make decisions. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I've seen people in the past where they we've had to actually go where I work to the court and get a guardian for that person because mm-hmm. they weren't able to make the decision Aww. and the court right. had to sign a guardian to make the decisions okay. for that and mm. it's just a complete stranger sure mm. and it's much better if you would have taken care of that right. when you were when able you to make have. decisions that's right. and yep. that's right yeah. very important yeah. um, so that's what i would do with those so do you have residents where couples can live together or yes. is it okay if they, if they choose to still yeah, want to live uh, together <laughs> <laughs> funny story i don't know if i should say it or not but uh friday i had um Somebody come in uh, with their dad, and the mom, the dad and the mom wanted to move in. And I said, okay. And they said, we want separate rooms. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was like, you, okay. Yeah, they're kind of, yeah. And then I said, does it have yeah. to be close together? And they said, no. So I said, okay. But yes, we have couples. That's kind of nice, though, I would think, because, you know, as you get older in that age, maybe they yeah. want to just pretend it's not all yeah. over, and they come knocking yeah, at the door at night. Yeah. And, Let's go on a date. But we yeah, act like they're dating. Yeah. <laughs> Start we all have, over. Um, we have seven couples now, all right? seven or eight couples. Uh, we've even had, uh, in the past, a few couples live in memory care together. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it's no longer that way. We had two couples up there. Yep. Um, because... They were married for 60 years. Mm-hmm. The spouse was sick, mm-hmm. and the other spouse wanted to still be with them. Sure. So they went and lived in memory care. And in it the studio. gets too taxing to, to take yeah. care of, t- of this patient. Right. And yeah. it worked, though. Yeah. Yeah. It worked. It did. You know? And then we have a couple where um, one spouse is in memory care and one spouse is in assisted living. Mm-hmm. And that way, they just the assisted living one just goes and visits whenever yeah. she wants. Yeah. And okay. She doesn't have to worry about driving someplace to visit them. Right. Um, she has lunch with them, mm-hmm. yeah, um, and does. that works too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're we're very accommodating. Yeah, and way. that support is there too. Right, right, right. And we have a great <coughs> ED. Uh, we didn't talk about our ED at all. No, we did not. You know, what's yeah. ED? Our executive director. Okay, <laughs> Denise Williams. You're gonna give a shout out to her. You know, so. Denise is um, RN, um, MSN, Masters in Nursing. Mm-hmm. Um, she runs the show. Um, She's got a lot. Like, if you look at her business card after her name, there's a lot of yeah. little things after <laughs> her. <laughs> That's a lot. And uh, one of the things Denise does for me is before we take anybody in, we evaluate them to determine, number one, that we can take them. Okay. And number two, what level of care they're at. Mm-hmm. And that's what um, she does to help me as, as my support. Um, and it's nice because I call her on the weekends, and she runs out and wherever yep. the person is, and uh, yep. it works. She's an asset to the team. Sometimes we see her dancing to the music. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to ask, does she sing too? Uh, she tries. <laughs> she, no, I think she thinks she's a dancer <laughs> because uh, she likes to dance down the hallway. And so, But she's a people person. I'm, I think we all are. Yeah. I think everybody in our positions, when she hired all of us, um, she just knew that we all were going to click and we all do our jobs. We go above and beyond when it comes to the people that we support there at the Dunes. So, um, you know. 
It's a good place. It it's is. a fun place. It is. Like our bus says, it's a fun place to live. You know, where uh, I think we laugh there more than anything. We have a lot of fun. And we're starting this new thing where <laughs> we're going to be having um, morning exercise with laughing incorporated in that. Okay. So uh, they're really going to think that we're crazy soon because <laughs> you hear us laughing already. Now it's going to be even more. I've heard of lap- so. laughter therapy. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. We're starting a little bit. And uh, the residents look at me like I have 10 heads, but they're so trusting with me. They, they do anything I ask. So anything silly, they, they're on board. So it's just a fun, it's, yeah. a, it's a nice place to come to also to work. Um, you know, when I, uh, when I drive in in the morning, it's never, oh, God, i got to go to work. <laughs> it's just a great place all around. It's, it's designed that way, and it, and it, it, it trickles down to the residents. Mm-hmm. If, if your staff is happy, if, if your department heads are happy, then their staff is happy, right. and then the residents are happy because it just trickles right, right. down to them. And, um, and I have to say, we have a l- all the residents are yeah. happy residents. Yeah, I haven't nice. met any crabby ones yet, and... It's been a year and a half. We don't allow them to be crabby. Right. right. <laughs> There's no time to be crabby. We just smiling faces all the time. So it's either the food or it's the activities or it's it's you, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just a it's good us. place. It's the building. You walk in, you just get it's a, a good nice feeling. feeling. Yeah. You know, sometimes you walk into places and you just feel, I feel the energy when I walk into the dunes, you know, so. I've had people tell me when they, that do tours, they come in, they sit down, they say we can just feel the. Right. The happiness, mm-hmm. the, the nice and the... Feel the love. Feel, feel the, love. the love, I guess right. you can say, yeah. And that's important because I know that if I had to leave my father somewhere, I want to make sure that, you know, he's getting everything. Mm-hmm. He's getting all that. And I think we do that at the dunes. Well, as your parents get up in age, you may have a little bit of experience visiting nursing homes or assisted livings. You know, sometimes they end up in temporary care. Mm-hmm. And you just know that it's just not a good place for them to stay. Right. You can tell pretty much within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I think customer service for us at the Dunes is big. We're big on customer service. We try to make sure that, okay, what do you need? All right, we're going to get it for you. You know, and if they come looking, like you said, everybody's always there to to get whatever they might need. So Mm -hmm. I, I have family members that have my cell phone. And um, I tell them all the time, if I'm off, call me on my cell, mm-hmm. text me. Um, I, if I'm not there, I can find somebody to call and say, you know, somebody's in the building, this is what they need. Or somebody from New York, a, a daughter calling me from New York and saying, you know, mom called and um, her, her uh, rem- this is a true story, her remote's not working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I bet her remote was just fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I used to get that call myself <laughs> and have to drive over to my dad's house because it c- he pressed something that yeah. made the or TV cha- not work right. They changed the channel right. on yeah. TV. Yeah. Little, so I would call Jose in maintenance and he'd get somebody up there and it's just as simple as that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I, I tell the residents all the time, I, I don't ever want to hear, I don't want to bother anybody. Right, never um, bother. I Never, because that's what they're there for. Right, yeah. Yeah, and and as you may be coming to a job and going home at the end of the job, your residents are there. They live there. That's right. Right. That's and right. And anything could happen at any time. Right. It, it's their home. Like I think yeah. sometimes when we're we're punching out for the day and we're leaving, and so and so will be walking by. Oh, hey, Joe, Joe, and you have to turn around and yeah. you know you go deal with that, and that's just what we do. Even um, the last week, I've been driving my wife's car to work, and this is true too. Um, Saturday. I work Saturdays. I had three people, three, say to me, you got a new car. They're noticing. They've noticed. So I had to stop and tell them, no, this is why. And, you know, but that's what it is. <laughs> we're pretty close. I think you know, we're pretty close with, with uh, the residents. So it's part of your family. Yeah. You know, it's, it becomes part of your family. That's good to know they're paying attention. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they do pay attention. There's no doubt about that. So we do have another call. Good morning, Judy. Good morning. I was wondering, and we, we listen to 1590 all the time. Thank you. But I was wondering, um, do you uh, take your uh, uh, clients on little excursions? Yes, we do. Okay. Well, I have one here that they might be interested in. I think it's at the age frame is perfect. I don't know if you've ever heard about the Road to Victory Military Museum in Stewart. It's just fantastic, and the veterans absolutely I love it. I think somebody it. dropped off um, a brochure for that place. 
Not, yeah, uh, my suggestion. Yeah, because <laughs> I think you know, that came why across are you doing this? But yeah, it's, for it's, sure. There's no cost. There's no cost. And even though they're only open on Saturdays for the public from two or ten to two, and sometimes it might be ten ten, they might be a little late. But it is a marvelous place, and uh, the veterans absolutely go gaga over it. They relive some of their past. It's every war. What is it called war. again? It's the Road to Victory Military Museum. It's behind the band shell. Okay. At the you know, we're going to go there. We're going to go there this month, Judy, and we're going to come. And are you going to be there if we go? Can we ask for you? Um, actually, I'm not. I'm disabled. I'm not a volunteer. But my father, I brought my father's um, CB stuff from Tokyo. Oh wow! He oh, wow. was on the admiral staff uh, for wow. the first year after the war, and he brought back a lot of things. And I've he was a CB, wow. and I brought that there. But I suggested that they send a cover letter with a, with a half a dozen brochures because it, it's it's stimulating and it's interesting and uh, but what you could do um, and I I have a, a phone oh you've got the brochure you've got the phone number right uh, they would be very very happy to set up uh, a private show yeah I will definitely so you would because sometimes they get a whole troop of Boy Scouts Oh. Saturday morning, wow. and, you know that would be difficult for mm -hmm. people like me who use a cane, mm -hmm. and, and they'd have the uh, you know the, the staff that real these people really know their stuff. Well, that's and great. It, it, yeah, so I that's what I was calling about. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, we'll definitely get we, them. We in. have uh, what would you say, Jen? About twenty resident uh, veterans. Veterans. Oh uh, well, maybe it's a little bit more than that mm. now that we've got a few new move-ins, but. Um, I know they're going to the Navy SEAL Museum, but we'll definitely get them out to this one mm -hmm. as well. Thank you, Judy, for your call. We're just about out of time in the show. This oh, is sure. Coffee at the Cabana, presented by the Cabana at Jensen Dunes. And let us know, again, location. Uh, phone number 772-332-1000. Address 1537 Northeast Cedar Street, Jensen Beach, Florida. Also, uh, you can email me if you have any questions. Uh, J DeCarlo, D-E-C-A-R-L-O, at jensendunes.com and uh, again feel free to come by we're more than welcome to take you around we love showing off our building and if you have any questions at all um, feel free to call I don't mind great back next week more coffee at the cabana here on WPSL digital 1590 the talk of the treasure coast This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast.